you're also not just taking four. So I'll say I'll say my piece right here. So I've always been against Roland in the metagame. I thought it's just always been a, a do-nothing card. However, if you expect every single one of your opponents to be bringing Tilting at Windmill's Dragon, mm -hmm. why not try it? Yeah. Give it a try. Give it a try. And then... I think that's a case of what, oh, sword banned look, out. And it got banned yeah. out. That's Does what not I'm talking what about. It. The other question is, you bring it for tilting at windmills, but it is, again, it's that conversation that we brought up about the last match. Just because you have an option that could play against it, does that mean you play against it, right? Right. And Sky Summer, again, not banning out Dragon. You know, just because you can, it's does that mean yeah. you should? <laughs> right. I think that's the whole thing, though. I don't think Sky Sama thought that his Swordcraft deck was going to get banned. Mm. So I think he banned out the Daria deck, which is the other scariest deck that we've seen. Daria's just been running rampant over the last couple of days. Deviate just threw him a curveball and said, you know what? I'm going to ban out that sword just to, just to kind of see because I know you're not going to ban my dragon. So that's another thing about these competitive players. You have to get inside their head. You have to start those mind games early. You have to understand. You need to believe. <laughs> and it really comes from how much trust a player has in their Dragoncraft deck. You know, are you a player who actually wants to play it, or are you a player who says, I think they're just going to ban it all the time, so I'm just going to ban for not having that Dragoncraft deck, right. right? And obviously DV8 says, you know what? I want to play my dragon, so I'm <laughs> going right. to ban like I'm going to be able to play it. Yeah, that's it's just very interesting. This is These are the subtle things about competitive play that really just set apart the best players from the players that are trying to be the best, right? It's just those little tiny things that give you an edge in a matchup. Oh, I love it. Urius is one of my favorite cards. I think Urius is going up a lot in stock. If we're considering neutral blood with wise vermin and goblins, mm. if we're considering shadowcraft, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Urius is just this nice extra damage engine in the early game, and 1-3s are better than ever now, mm -hmm. especially if people are still running burncraft rune. Uh, or burn runecraft rather, um, and trying to trade with the magic illusionist or whatever the case may be, there's a lot more Baphomet, there's a lot more even Evelicia we've seen in the metagame. So 1-3s I think are at their prime and I think Lyriel's right alongside of that. Wow, he's just saying, I like spaghetti enough <laughs> that I will gladly accept. <laughs> Give me a few spaghettis to the face. <sighs> no problem. The turn is not super clear I think for DV8. I think not. you're going to have to choose to run the Urias in, yep. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, regardless of what happens here, one of those Lyrials is getting some good value. Yeah. I think it's the one that's animated, honestly. Let's see if DVA is, is akin to this. Do I don't think you run animated card? cards and not evolve those ones. Come uh, on. Oh, you did. You had the choice. He's the long target them. choice. See, DVA it's a very nice person, okay? Very community-oriented oh, guy, allowing that animated version to stay in play. Oh, man. Basically giving us a treat, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Takes down that, yep. And gonna get the ping and face damage. Perfect. And this is just crazy. When Lyriel can actually evolve her face while still dealing with the board, mm -hmm. I mean, talk about the oh. tempo advantage. And we didn't even talk about this too much, but Sky Sub is running neutral rune, by the way. Right, right. We did not talk about this. So he's running the neutral kind of wallet package. He's got yes. the top end, he's got the word wielder ginger, gingers, mm -hmm. he's got all this crazy stuff that we saw last week. The he didn't second perform time. very well yeah, yeah. last week. However, yeah, we saw Warfaki running the Word Wielder Ginger version of Rune, and I think this list is slightly different. There's a few things here and there that I think are different. I'm going to have to put the deck side by side to really know for sure, but some of the hallmarks of this deck is the card draw that it offers, mm -hmm. the big board states that it can construct on that Word Wielder Ginger turn, and then things like Elta, right, locking out things like Bahamut and, and other kind of effects that a lot of decks actually rely very heavily on. Absolutely, and we do see Illusionist being adopted by this deck as well, just for extra mid-game push, as well as combos in the late game with Zeus and the like. Mm -hmm. Not going to choose to use the Evolution Orb, and I think that's probably smart here. Very smart. Again, it's always about who has the last Evolution point. They usually have an advantage, and it's really tough to want to give that up. Mm -hmm. And maybe Deviate's also thinking, you know what, please evolve that Illusionist and go face so that I can be in Vengeance here mm. and get some extra value out of this Belphegor. I think Sky Sun is probably going to respect the Vengeance. Yeah. I don't think there's any good reason to arbitrarily throw him into, into that territory. Definitely need to respect that a lot. It's very interesting to see this <laughs> neutral 
rune deck being more wow. aggressive than this kind of like neutral uh -huh. vengeance blood deck. Yeah, it just chooses to put himself to 10 with 4, 2, and 4 on board. Yeah, this is getting really scary for Deviate here. <laughs> Give me a sign. Which means that you must use this Blood Wolf to clear board. Sa he's savage now. He no yes, longer believes. savage, that's right. He's a savage wolf. Yeah. Savage. Savage. All what right. is the turn here for Sky Summer? Has the last evolution orb. Could opt to go for just a trade with the Illusionist and say, you know what, I'm going to have the tempo advantage. And I, I think that's smart. If you save that evolution orb for Israfil, you know what? What is Vengeance Blood going to do it's against true. That? Honestly, though, with the hand that Sky Sama has, he can really do anything. Um, fortunately for him, he has all of his options, especially with that Israfil drawn. He's got the Bahamut for the following turn after that if he wants to take it to an endgame. He can also evolve for face, put his opponent to four, and kind of threaten anything. You know what I mean? Mm. Now, now Deviate's put in this position where he has to just be defensive for the rest of the game, which is exactly the opposite of where Blood Ducks want to be. Remember, the Grimoire is oh. all about drawing cards, but the neutral rune list does not actually run spells. So That's right. It basically is just two card draw. That's right. And the happy pick drawn off the top is another breath of fresh air for Sky Sama. Just other ways to heal back the defense. Yep. And yeah, I think this is all just going to have to trade, unfortunately. Let's go. And I think as soon as this Isterfil gets dropped, we're going to see a scoop from DV8. Yeah. I don't know how you come back from that. It's kind of like the last match that we just saw. Yeah. Interesting, too, because I think the double Urius is, is kind of a turn too late as well. Mm -hmm. You would have loved the Urius on the turn where the pure heart of the Grimoire and the happy pig was played. That's right. And one interesting thing that I want to talk about is that Sky Sama chose to go with a neutral rune package instead of a dragon package mm -hmm. and kind of play the same type of role. Yeah. Maybe he just feels way more comfortable about it. Maybe he feels like tilting at windmills was going to get hated out because of all of yes. the people understanding that it is one of the top decks now. Mm -hmm. And it might, might have been a great call for this tournament. Just drawing even more options now and plentiful amounts of ward to stop any kind of damage on DV8's end. He's got the Krimner, got the Hector. Isn't even the playing the Goblin, Israfil. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't even need it. And while Urius is good, these are not the cards you want to be drawing in the endgame. Two Urius is followed by, by Mr. Goblin over there. Yeah. Not the endgame punch you're looking for. I don't think there's a way for the board to be cleared here. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. At the most, you can only remove the Goblin Mount Demon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the new Ogre card, so it's interesting. We only see Goblin it as like Mount a one-up. That's right. Yeah. Gosh, really? all these old names are I know. popping up. Well, it's because Blood they kind of split the Goblin names, Mount right? Ogre, so it's yeah. like Blood Wolf to Savage Wolf. Now it's Goblin Mount Demon to Goblin Mount Ogre. Yes. Uh, the Ogre is an interesting card. So Ogre we see as like a one-of option mm. index, and I think it's a really nice option because it gives you that enhance effect to go later in the game and be a bigger yeah. ward if you need it to be. Yeah. Quite quite strong, actually. You know, six defense is nothing to laugh at, and that's before the evolve, right? Right. You can actually get a very beefy ward, and against things like Bloodcraft sometimes, and especially now with less and less removal options there, DV8 says, you know what, <laughs> I yeah, understand. I, I can't yeah. really push through this. Yeah. I know that you have more expensive cards in your hand that can do even more in the late game, and DVH is going to move on to the next game here. And and really, I think we, we continue to highlight this, right? But on turn five, getting a card that has six defense, possibly eight, in a game where Dance of Death is not a thing anymore. Right. You know, where previously, if you imagine that scenario, right, Vengeance Blood, Aggro Blood, whatever it is, has this hand or this board of followers, and then you play the Goblin Mount Ogre and say, hey, this is a very beefy ward, try to get past it. They would just say, fine, I'll get the free two damage and just still swing everything in anyways. That's a very aggressive turn and slows down your tempo incredibly. What I think might change, again, if it, if it really comes down to just these big wards stopping you, if you're playing an aggressive deck, whether it be Neutral Blood or Daria, Daria has some options like Mutagenic Bolt, not a lot of players are adopting that yet, you know what I mean? It's going to come time where cards like Crimson Purge and, you know, all the other just neutral type of, you know, five drop removal spells might come back into the metagame because you just need that card to push without using up one of your evolution orbs or being able to use it for damage as opposed to defensively. Yeah. I feel like time will come where they come back into the meta. Yeah. It's interesting to think about. I mean, Dance of Death was very popular, I would say, but it was still 
pretty niche in certain scenarios, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I mean, you still only played one or two of it, but yeah. at least it gave your deck that option yeah. to be able to push when you needed and to. And when you, when you had that perfect scenario, it worked out brilliantly. Mm -hmm. Now we actually get to see a, a very close mirror match here. Yeah. Yeah, the decks may be a little bit off uh, from card for card, but similar ideas. We've got neutral packages, we've got Vengeance Blood. It's good stuff. I want to ask both these players how they open their packs. What do you mean? They both have the Dark General here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> which I think is the newest, most rare pool. I still don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> and I open up a ton of packs, and people who know and have uh, watched my pack openings in the past uh, know my luck with opening packs, and it makes me very sad. Mm. Somebody was opening a packs earlier up here in the studio and opened oh my up God. another leader. N so the most incredible part of it, Open up Cerberus in, in the 10 Chronogenesis packs. I guided him through and, and kind of taught him how to switch his leaders. And like, oh, you should change your emblem too. Notice that he had the emblem for Daria as well. Like Unreal. He just didn't even know. Unreal. Open up like 20 realize. packs, got two leaders. I'm sitting over here with like 150 packs plus every <laughs> expansion. Just can't do it. Impossible. Oh, man. Evolved Yurius. And I, I love Vengeance Blood Mirrors. They really come down to who does play their turns better. Yeah. Of course, Belphegor's really help, but both players have that option. So this is just going to come down to, okay, when do I go in? How do yes. I get the most value on every turn? Do I put myself down to 10? These are all important decisions. I really like this because Sky Summon finds himself in the position where he was able to gain an evolution orb through Scarlet Subrur. Mm-hmm. Which is very important. And now we, we see ourselves at a board situation where it's just a savage wolf, not something that's impossible to deal with. And I think Sky Summon, if he kind of has the right options in hand, is going to be able to kind of overcome this and be at an advantage in that sense. Wow. So Sky Summon going to go for it, put himself to 10 here, is building up towards that Emeralda coming up next turn. So very nice time to pop uh, pull the trigger here. Mm -hmm. Evolve the Goblin, try to spread stats here. And I think that's great. Turn before Emeralda as well. Mm -hmm. I think the Belphegor has to be the answer. Yep. Yeah, there's no other plays here, unfortunately. And without Diabolic Ooh. Drain, you know, the menace of pass uh, pre-rotation, yes. there's no way to really come back in a huge way in a single turn. I think off the top is going to be very important here. What's the damage? One, three, four. He's got eight, ten. Oh, okay, clearing, clearing out that follower is super important. I yeah. think DVA realized that. It was lethal on board if he did not. That's right. So only seven damage this turn. However, an angel of the word in the wings with a savage wolf for the yes. following turn. Deviate's going to have to win this turn or he's going to yeah. be out of this. I, I think the triple emerald is just going to be very, very difficult. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Has to go for board control here, but with the angel of the word and the savage wolf, just... Very, very tough. Such an aggressive matchup here. And Sky Thama is going to be able to take the victory here against DV8. That's Send right. DV8 to losers. I think it was such an important turn. I, I, I wonder if DV8 had a different option to play in that in that scenario where he used his first evolution or left the follower at two defense and played right into the Scarlet Sabreur. That's like I said, every decision matters because it's a tempo game, right? So like who gets to play the first Emeralda? How do you use your evolution points, you know, in the best possible way? However, the way Sky Sama played that matchup, I really don't feel like Deviate had a chance. I think that, you know, going into vengeance on the appropriate turn, slapping down that Emeralda, having the damage in hand, it's just too overwhelming without the abundance of healing that Vengeance Blood had access to. Raise Reclaw as well for removal as opposed to doing face damage is